everybody. So uh, my name is Colton. I'm the founder of Prime Protocol. And like you might have heard from Sergey, uh, we're building uh, basically a borrowing and liquidity protocol on top of Axelar and Moonbeam. And so this presentation is just going to be about uh, interoperability in DeFi, uh, why I think we need it, uh, how Prime solves a lot of these issues, and how we think you know, we're going to drive, help drive the next wave of value creation. So I think DeFi has somewhat stagnated uh, and it's stagnated because uh, we built these DeFi primitives like swapping, uh, borrowing, and uh, some other you know, more niche primitives like options protocols. Um, but then we really stopped building new stuff. While, and, and what ended up happening was you just ended up with uh, a lot of these copy paste projects. So a new, a new L1 would come out or a new L2 would come out and everybody would just fork the same projects over to that ecosystem. And you know, then they'd give huge liquidity rewards, which I call Ponzi-nomics, uh, basically trying to convince you to use their protocol because the only thing new that they were offering was higher rewards. And this was unsustainable and I think doomed to fail from the start. Uh, and I think now as you're seeing some consolidation happen at, at the application level, uh, you can see the first movers who were the ones who you know, did the original innovation like uh, Compound and Aave for borrowing, Uniswap for swapping um, and others are the ones who are really holding on to their market share. And so our goal with Prime is to really get back to value creation. And what do we think DeFi needs to create more value? Well, we need to increase transparency. We need to reduce risk in financial systems and we need higher capital efficiency. I think DeFi by its very nature does one and two very well. Uh, everything's over collateralized. Everything is on chain and transparent. And I think especially this week, uh, it, the need for transparency and understanding your risk and financial systems has never been clearer. The one thing that I think DeFi needs a lot of help with is higher capital efficiency. And part of what I think is really driving uh, increased capital efficiency going forward is going to be interoperability between blockchains. Uh, and that's why at Prime, we believe the future is omnichain. Uh, each blockchain is going to have some combina combination of you know, security, scalability, and decentralization. And depending on your application that you're trying to build, uh, you might want a different combo of these. And uh, that's why we're seeing a lot of app chains uh, come up. We're seeing new L1s with different programming languages. We're seeing different L2s, different ways of scaling Ethereum. Uh, in particular, right now, there's a lot of hype around all of the zero knowledge ecosystems that are coming out, uh, which I think are going to be a huge step forward. But moral of the story is, I think you're never going to end up in a world where there's just one blockchain. I think you're always going to have a lot. And that means that you're putting capital in different places. And if you're dividing your liquidity across many different ecosystems, that's highly capital efficient. And so Prime seeks to be the unifying financial infrastructure uh, for borrowing and liquidity across different ecosystems, rather than having to uh, manage six different accounts. If you're using six different chains, like the picture here illustrates, uh, you can withdraw or borrow to any of these chains using one account. And that allows you to be cross margined in all of your positions, which means that your liquidation risk is going to be lower. And it also offers a much better user experience. So, what is Prime Protocol? Well, Prime Protocol allows cross-margining, universal mon monetary policy, and allows one global margin account that you can deposit all of your tokens into regardless of which blockchain you're using. Prime offers an over-collateralized stable coin. We don't do any forced redemptions. Uh, we offer cross-chain liquidations, competitive interest rates, no deposit fees, and it's natively cross-chain. Uh, and as you think about you know, where Prime sits in sort of the DeFi stack, I think what we are aiming to do uh, is basically build a liquidity layer on top of each L1, sort of like I've talked about. So the way Prime is built, we have this master deployment on Moonbeam, and that master deployment maintains your account state, 
There's all of the liquidity calculations that you need. And then we use Axelar uh, to send messages between Moonbeam and satellite chains. Uh, and this allows us you know, to take a deposit on Ethereum, but then record that deposit on Moonbeam, sort of like Sergey was just talking about in the presentation before. Uh, then we have uh, on top of Prime, you can build a whole variety of different applications or use cases. So these can include consumer facing applications. So maybe you wanna make it really easy for somebody to deposit, but they don't know how to use a wallet. You could build a consumer facing application that deposits into Prime, earns yield on the borrows, uh, and then potentially offers people leverage on their holdings as well. You could build yield aggregators on top of Prime, trading bots, uh, other D apps that need some sort of liquidity or spot leverage. Uh, and so I think there's a, a wide variety of use cases here. And after all, this is a Moonbeam uh, presentation. Uh, so why did we specifically choose to build on Moonbeam and Polkadot uh, and build our master chain in that ecosystem? Well, each offer us unique uh, advantages. Polkadot uh, has shared assets between and shared data between parachains. So by locating our master deployment on Polkadot, it will be really easy for us uh, to basically benefit from the shared security model that Polkadot has and take assets from other parachains into Prime. And so this will allow us to collateralize the entire Polkadot ecosystem, uh, which we're very bullish on because we think that uh, Polkadot's architecture with both its shared security for XCMP uh, and sharding will keep it fast and affordable in the future. Um, and is really, you know, Polkadot is all about interoperability. And I think that a lot of these specialized use cases that I was alluding to earlier, uh, Polkadot really lends itself well to be able to build many of these. Moonbeam uh, has a huge advantage because it's EVM compatible. So it was very low friction for us uh, to develop on Moonbeam. It easily access the accesses the Polkadot ecosystem, while it also seamlessly bridges assets from other chains. So by being connected through message passers like Axelar, uh, you basically get the best of both worlds on Moonbeam. Uh, you can take assets on outside L1s or L2s and EVM compatible chains, which is what we're starting out with, uh, or you can use Polkadot's uh, cross-chain assets and take those on Moonbeam as well. Moonbeam also has really low fees and it's fast. And that's important for a master chain deployment because uh, you know, if you're depositing on ETH L1, you don't want to be paying that ETH L1 fee every time you do something on another chain. And so part of the benefit of this architecture is that uh, if you deposit on ETH L1, you only have to pay this gas fee once. Once it's recorded what you have deposited on Moonbeam, Every other liquidity check can be done on chain on Moonbeam, uh, which is really going to reduce your cost of taking out borrows or withdrawals or anything that we're going to need to check that collateral for. And the other thing I really want to highlight is that Prime is natively multi-chain. Um, and one of the big advantages of being natively multi-chain and built for multi-chain from the beginning is that a lot of existing protocols uh, started out on single chains, then they did multiple deployments, and now they're looking to connect those deployments after the fact. The problem with that is uh, it's really hard to upgrade a project to actually implement the kind of cross margining that we've done if you started out with separate deployments. There's a lot of potential vulnerabilities. Uh, it's going to increase your cost and your latency significantly. And ultimately what we're seeing other projects opt for that already had many single chain deployments is just using some sort of bridge to connect to those deployments and basically put some sort of wrapper on the user experience to try and make it a, a little bit more bearable. Um, but what Prime is doing differently is we built for, for multi-chain from the beginning, uh, which gives us a lot of unique architecture advantages uh, that I think are going to serve us well in the future because we'll be able to offer all different kinds of collateral, not just collateral that's you know, supported on a single chain. Uh, and we'll be able to do all of that cross margining, which I think is really going to add a lot of value to the ecosystem. 
So uh, we've made it to the end of the presentation and now I'm going to go through and do a quick demo uh, of Prime so you can check it out. Um, at the, I'll also bring this up at the end of the presentation. Would love for you to join our community, uh, join us on Twitter, join us on Discord. Uh, we're growing fast and would love to have you be a part of the journey. So now I'm going to pull up uh, the app and just give a, a quick demo of what I'm talking about and why we're so excited about this. All right, here we go. So I'm just going to switch over to Fuji. Fuji is the Avalanche testnet. And I'm just going to demonstrate a quick deposit and then a borrow from a different chain. So I've already used this account a little bit, but it looks like we don't have any DAI deposited. So I'm just going to go ahead and mint some DAI on Fuji. going to select the Fuji network. So I know that's where I'm depositing and looks like my die just minted. So now I can go ahead and deposit. Uh, I'm going to deposit all 100,000. You can also use the max button. I've got to do a quick approval because I haven't approved die in this wallet before. And now I'm going to perform the deposit. And you might notice that the gas fee looks a little bit higher than typical. Uh, the reason for that is a lot of that gas is actually going to be refunded to you, but we just need to make sure that we have enough gas in the transaction so we can send a message from the satellite chain to the master chain communicating that die deposit. And so we need to pay a relayer to relay that message. And we also need to pay gas on the destination chain. Fortunately, because Moonbeam has very low gas costs, uh, we'll be able to refund a lot of that cost to the user after the transaction goes through. And using Axelar's generic relayers, every, all of that happens automatically. All right, so now that deposit is in progress. And if you want to check on the progress of a, of a deposit, or withdrawal or any sort of transaction on Prime, you can just click the, uh, the pending spinner and it will take you to Axelar scan. And you can check out uh, you know, what's going on with your transaction, if it's been approved or not, if it's been delivered. So right now we're waiting for it to be approved uh, and for finality to be reached on the Axelar blockchain. While we're waiting on that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take, show you how to take out a borrow from a different chain. So all of the collateral I've deposited so far is on, um, is, is on Fuji. We have a Bitcoin that I've deposited earlier and we have some DAI that I've deposited just now. And so rather than take out that loan on Fuji, maybe I really want to take out that loan on Moonbase, um, which is Moonbeam's testnet. So I'm going to request a loan of $1,000 on Moonbase. And the cool thing about Prime is I don't need to move any collateral from Fuji over to Moonbase. Everything is handled under the hood and this position will be cross-margined and collateralized against the deposits that I made uh, on Fuji. All right, so now I just submitted that, uh, that transaction and that should go through shortly. And you know, this is just a very simple example of what's possible with Prime. Uh, soon we'll have more assets for you to borrow in. We'll have ways for you to earn yield on the assets that you're depositing. Uh, and we're also going to expand the number of chains that you see. So. You know, right now, we're supporting test nets on Moonbeam, Avalanche, Phantom, Polygon, and ETH. 
but you can imagine there's many more chains that uh, message passers like Axelar are able to get us to. And so we're excited to expand Prime across the whole ecosystem. If you didn't notice while I was talking, both that deposit and that loan went through. Uh, so you can see my borrowed balance went up by $1,000. Uh, my deposit balance went up by 100000 uh, And everything looks like uh, it worked. So uh, would love for you to check out our test net. This is currently live. And uh, right now we're building those last few features that I mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of new exciting stuff coming to Prime that's also unannounced. And once we get those done, we're going to be heading towards mainnet very soon. Uh, so to everybody watching, um, hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Um, I'm going to bring back up the slideshow for this last minute here. So if you want, you'll be able to follow us on social media, get in the Discord, and become a part of this journey with us. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for watching. On Twitter, we're at prime underscore protocol. Um, give us a follow there, and you can use this QR code to hop into our Discord.